Roman Grosjean refuses to stop costing Michael Andretti money. The crash-prone Frenchman is taking Michael Andretti and Andretti Autosport to arbitration because he believed that the team was going to retain him for the 2024 season. Instead, the team went out and signed Marcus Erickson as his replacement for 2024 and tossed Roman Grosjean out to the curb along with all the broken pieces of carbon fiber uh, that was his 2023 season. This isn't a lawsuit like we've seen with the Alex Pelot saga that appears to be never ending at this point between himself, McLaren, his management group, Chip Ganassi Racing. No, this is instead an arbitration case. Grosjean isn't seeking a race seat out of this arbitration, but rather what he believes is owed to him in terms of compensation. So you're probably wondering, how did we get here? Well, earlier in the 2023 season, uh, back towards the beginning of the year, Andretti sent over a contract to Roman Grosjean to extend the relationship beyond 2023. Obviously, his contract ended at the end of 2023. It was a two-year deal, and they wanted to extend him 2024 and beyond. Roman Grosjean and his team signed their ver their side of the contract, and they sent it back to Andretti, who proceeded to not sign their portion of the contract. They instead watched him go out and crash in 7 of 17 races on the IndyCar schedule. He then had multiple blow-ups with the team, a really contentious relationship, and they ultimately decided not to re-sign him by not signing their side of the contract. They went out and signed Marcus Erickson instead, and that's where Roman Grosjean is a little miffed at. So this is where arbitration comes in. Roman Grosjean is taking Andretti Global, Andretti Autosport to arbitration to get money that he believes is owed to him because he did sign the contract. So that's what an arbitrator is going to decide. They're going to decide whether Andretti Global owes money to Roman Grosjean because he did sign a contract, or they could decide that Michael Andretti and Andretti Global do not owe Roman Grosjean anything because they never actually signed the deal, so it's null and void. It really depends on how the arbitrator feels and what is presented to them. At the end of the day, Andretti never signed the deal with Roman Grosjean to extend their relationship, so technically it's not a done deal. Grosjean and his team are going to argue that because the contract was presented to them in good faith, they assume that by signing it, that is a deal that is you know set in place going forward. Uh, that is a legal binding deal. Unfortunately for them, Michael Andretti and his side, they never signed this deal. So you kind of have a he said, he said going on here. Uh, but ultimately, an arbitrator will decide whether or not compensation is owed to Roman Grosjean or, you know, Michael Andretti and his team can just do what they actually want to do with Roman Grosjean and get him out of their lives like a toxic ex. Roman Grosjean's welcome in IndyCar wore off so fast. I don't know if we've ever seen a rise and downfall as quickly as his in terms of popularity or general consensus amongst a fan base. When he joined IndyCar in 2021 with Dale Coyne, he was this likable underdog, overperforming in underperforming equipment historically. So it was a really warm story, especially coming off of his incident in Bahrain when he almost burned to death in Formula One and his rise to stardom on the Drive to Survive series. He was a really welcome character in the, the IndyCar paddock. But then, as soon as he switched over to Andretti Autosport in year two and year three, 2022 and 2023, he immediately went right back to being that whiny, unlikable, crash-prone driver we saw for so many years in Formula One. Because of that, you know, revert back to who he was, it really turned him off with a big portion of the fan base. He went from being IndyCar's most popular driver to just another guy that was on the grid that was underperforming in equipment that should have been winning. Sure, he got two podiums in 2023, which is pretty cool. But at the end of the day, he didn't win any races. He was in line to win at St. Pete, got taken out by Scott McLaughlin, and then he was in position to potentially win at Barber in Alabama, and then just straight up got beat by Scott McLaughlin again. So at the end of the day, he never had a win. He has a few podiums. He has a pole as well, uh, but he always seemed to underperform when everybody was expecting him to go out there and do what all the Formula One fans say Formula One drivers will do when they come to IndyCar, which is win, except that usually doesn't happen. In Roman Grosjean's three years in IndyCar, his stats are okay at best. In 13 races with Dale Coyne Racing in 2021, he only ran 13 of the 16 races because he did not run the ovals before Gateway that season. He racked up three podiums and a pole. Pretty good considering where Dale Coyne equipment is at. And everybody had these astronomical expectations for him going into the 2022 season when he joined Andretti Autosport, one of the big three in IndyCar. 
Since then, in 34 races with Andretti Autosport, he has the same number of podiums he had in 13 races with Dale Coyne, three, and he scored two poles at Andretti. Outside of that, Roman Grosjean's career in IndyCar has been rather mundane, especially for a guy that came over from Formula One, uh, where Formula One fans, of course, have always overvalued the driving talent of most of their drivers, and he's not even good enough to win races in IndyCar, where guys like Marcus Erickson have won multiple races in IndyCar. There is a big argument out there that IndyCar needs Roman Grosjean because he's popular, because he brings in some of that Formula One fan base, and because he does have a connection to Europe. But in all honesty, there hasn't been this huge uptick in viewership because of Roman Grosjean. It's kind of petered off and started to decline because everybody just kind of understands what Roman Grosjean is now. And regardless of how many PR pieces Jack Binion and the race continue to put out for Roman Grosjean, IndyCar doesn't actually need him. He might not even be on the grid for the 2024 season. He has been linked to Hunkos, which honestly, if he replaces Augustine Canapino and gets that toxic fan base out of here, that's actually a win for the sport because Grosjean's fans aren't very toxic. They're usually just kind of boring. Uh, but for the most part, Grosjean is likely not going to be on the grid. And I don't think anybody in IndyCar really is going to miss him. If he was this big draw and sponsors absolutely wanted him, Andretti would have held on to him. But instead, they lost DHL, they're headed over to Ganassi, and there was nobody else that was really willing to hop onto the car for Roman Grosjean as a sponsor. So at the end of the day, we don't need Roman Grosjean in IndyCar. IndyCar has enough personality and enough star power to not need a washed up Formula One driver that never really came close to contending. Granted, he has multiple Formula One podiums, which is awesome, but since then, he's just kind of been a guy that's been around, he's floating around with Haas, not really achieving much there, scoring points on occasion. And then he comes to any car and he does much of the same, not win. And he hasn't won anything in a single seater in a major category in over a decade. So there's not really a reason to hold on to him if he's not competing for wins, especially when you can go out and get a younger driver that doesn't demand the salary that Roman Grosjean did uh, that can go out there and win races and basically do the exact same thing as him. Two podiums is great, but I mean, Graham Rahal got two podiums this year and I don't think anybody expected that. Let me know in the comments, should Roman Grosjean even be in IndyCar? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.